Five years ago, we took a leap of faith, listed everything that we own on Facebook Marketplace, sold it all over in a couple of weeks, packed up our entire family and moved 1,200 miles to a place where I knew absolutely no one. Since moving to Tampa, Florida, we really have learned a lot about living in the Sunshine State, um, which did come with some things that we didn't expect. And in today's video, we're going to share the good, the bad, the ugly, what we love about living in Florida and what we may not necessarily like. So we just hope that this video helps to clarify some things and help you make an informative decision if moving to Florida is right for you. And if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm Kate Alcala. And we make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here. What it's like to work here. What it's like to play here. The food. The dining. The outdoors. The beaches. And the sunshine. We're also licensed real estate agents and team leaders here with the True Living Group where we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. All right, now as we get rolling here, the first thing that I want to do is I just want to take the time to um, thank my beautiful wife for getting on camera because this is not her day job, it's mine. <laughs> um, I basically had to beg her to get on camera and, and share and she asked me to prepare her, but I thought if this video would be best if we didn't do that, right? Like we want to be as genuine as humanly possible and transparent and share. If you guys follow the channel at all, you know that like I share the stuff that most people won't and that is okay. Everywhere that you ever live, it's never going to be perfect, no matter where that is. And we've, we've moved enough. I mean, goodness gracious, we've moved seven times in our relationship, I think. It's been a lot. We were these uh, hoppers. Yeah, we moved a lot before making the transition. This is the longest we've ever lived anywhere in our entire life. <laughs> so that level of commitment was uh, uncomfortable at best for both of us. And um, we just want to share our experience. So if you're considering making this a reality, this jump, maybe you're moving from San Francisco, maybe you're moving from Seattle, maybe you're moving from Pacific Northeast or Chicago or like or, or Metro Detroit, like where we moved from. Um, we want you to know that um, first and foremost, I think the first thing that you are probably wondering is why, why would we pack up and move 1200 miles without knowing a single human being who would do that with three kids under the age of seven? Ultimately, it was a lifestyle choice for us, right? We are from the Midwest. We were, you know, I was born in California, didn't live there. We only stayed there until I was 11 months old. And I spent basically the rest of my um, childhood and my adult life up till 41 years of age in the state of Michigan, longing to be somewhere where it wasn't gray, dreary, cold, and, and just warm, for goodness sake. <laughs> now, some of you live in beautiful areas, right? You live in Sadie, like, you live in some amazing areas, and that is wonderful, but that was not our experience, right? We had to suffer through every cold, gray, dreary, rainy, frozen winter, and basically from the end of October, I mean, y'all, it could snow on, on Halloween. It didn't often do that but I guarantee you it was gonna rain and be cold and nasty, um, or it could snow. And that lasted till right around Mother's Day, every single year, yeah. right? And even the year we moved here, you remember when we moved out here, your mom sent us a photo of her deck, mm -hmm. right? On May 4th, by the way. Yeah, and covered in snow. And if I, we're not from North Michigan, we're from Southeast Michigan, so it's not like you're dealing with Northern weather. It's no. But we long to get, like, we just wanted out. Now, in all fairness, your dad, her her, yeah. her dad, my father-in-law, lives on the Atlantic coast, on the on the ocean side of Florida. Um, and he's been there for how long now? Gosh, 27, tw almost 30 years. 30 years. And he's moved several times on the on the uh, the east coast of Florida. He used to live in Lauderdale. and, and He slowly made himself, like, up a little bit up the coast. But now he's pretty much... A bird shot across the sea. Yeah, and he lives in the Jensen Beach, Port St. Lucie, Lucie area, which is where we honestly thought that we were going to move. Like for a decade, we thought we were, we got married there on the beach um, when when my son was just a baby, and like we that was home. We were like we were convinced we were moving to that area, um, and for yeah, I know. I mean, just like we thought that that was going to happen, and when we started this journey, we knew that we longed for a different lifestyle, yeah. and. Ultimately, that is what most people who are, are making the transition are coming for. You know, I always tell everybody, you don't have to shovel sunshine, no. right? And 
Um, it doesn't snow here. It does get cold on occasion. Like today's one of those days we actually had to turn the heat on here in Florida. Uh, two or three times a year it happens, but it does happen, right? Yeah. So like this, this is the reality of it. We don't live in Key West or Miami where it basically never gets under 60 degrees, but like it does get cool from time to time. It's a rarity, yeah. um, but it does happen. And uh, we were making that lifestyle transition to go from, you know, months and months and months of never seeing the sun, mm -hmm. right? Um, and literally it would feel like that. I know it would sneak out from time to time, but it would be consecutive weeks without having a full sun, sunny day to moving and making the transition here to where we get roughly 250 days of sunshine a year. And even on the quote unquote overcast days, the sun still comes out at some point. It just has a different effect on how you feel. Oh, it totally has a different effect on how you feel. Um, Vitamin D is important on a multitude of levels, you know, and vitamin C as in S-E-A. <laughs> um, but yeah, the lifestyle was the biggest piece of why we moved here. We liked being outside and we liked doing things outdoors and I didn't want to have to bundle up because that's not for me. That's for some of you and it's not for us. Um, I don't want to have to wear closed-toed shoes. I'd rather wear that flip-flop. Yeah, and Kate said it, we're a really active family, right? Kids all play sports. I mean, we just came off the football field tonight and we've had soccer all winter outdoors over the last three years. And it's just such a transition for us where it's oh dark 30 by four o'clock up north, 430, you know, um, dark when you leave for work, dark when you come home, um, you bundle up for everything. You t tend to want to stay indoors because going outside is not a fun event, right? And now to be able to be outside and go for walks and runs. I mean, she just ran to the beach two days ago. I mean, it, you know, it's stunning when you go down there and you get, you get to just smell the salty air and experience in that, and you may not be a beach baby and that's okay. But the thing that I hope you take away from this is the active outdoor lifestyle can absolutely, it will fill your cup, right? And if you're a little bit of a homebody, that's okay too. But having sun sneak in the windows is off often yeah. a very good thing. Next, I wanna share some of the things that we really come to love about living here in Florida. And I'm gonna start with the obvious. For me, it's the beaches. Um, my number one requirement was that I need to be within 15 minutes to the beach of wherever we plan ourselves. It didn't matter where it was, all up the coast. It had to be the beaches and why the beach? I find peace there. Um, it quiets everything, it's beautiful. It's different every single time you go. And the people there are genuinely happy and grateful that they get to be there and they're super welcoming. Um, my kids never meet a stranger on the beach. All the kids just end up playing together. And as for a family, it's wonderful. You can go down for a sunset. You can go just do all kinds of stuff from paddleboarding to fishing and all of those things right on the beach. Yeah. And, um, you know, when we first moved here, I was going down to sunsets basically every day. I, there, there was a point when I went down and it was raining and I still went. <laughs> And um, I say that, I, I laugh about it because that's how much it it connects with my soul, right? Now, you may not be a beach baby and that is okay. Kate is, I am, the kids are. We love being around the water. We have a pool in, in, in our backyard, um, but we still love going to the beach. And it, it just, some, it does, it really recharges you. There's something about putting your toes in that sand and smelling that salty air that is very, very unique. And when you see a Gulf Coast sunset, it is like, mm, it, it is the Lord just paints the sky, right? Um, you, you know, you can have cotton candy skies, champagne skies. Like it's just, it's an incredible palette of colors. It's unbelievable. And then, you know, another thing is like, I walk the dog every day in our, in our neighborhood. And there are so many people out walking, running, biking, being active. They're happy because they're outside getting plugged into the earth. Um, again, the sun is shining and it just is something that just rubs off on you. You know, our friends got boats and paddle boards and jet skis and, you know, we do all the things active, um, you know, that, that people love and you know, there's some things missing. I would love to see a mountain. It's just not going to happen in Florida. We have to travel to them, <laughs> right? So, you know, we're, we're going through some of these things about, you know, what are we missing, you know, from, from our previous life that we can um supplement and this past year we went to the blue ridge mountain in in georgia um you know at the um, right around thanksgiving mm -hmm. time period and it was beautiful and it was lovely it was a great recharge and then i got to come home because it was warm <laughs> <laughs> right so like that is become extremely important to us neither one of us or our children like being cold anymore it is not fun they're a bunch of babies no it's a true story 
when it comes to the area, one of the things that we absolutely love um, is how welcoming and inviting so many people were. And um, this is something that shocked Kate and I because it's not something we expect, no. right? We didn't expect to come. We were really nervous, just like most people are. Um, we were extremely uncomfortable with the idea of moving away from our church family. Um, you know, that was our church home. We had really, you know, raised two children in that church. And like, it was important to us. And that may not be to you, and that's okay. But it was something we were anxious about. We didn't know anybody here, so that definitely put a lot of pressure on, on the move. But when we moved here, so many people were so inviting right away. No, they really were. And the interesting fact, so he sells real estate um, and we work as a team. So we're working from home. I homeschool the kids. So we weren't in a situation where you would normally be out to meet people. We had to intentionally go out and meet people. And that is not my nature to do. Um, I am totally like, I will make friends with people based upon proximity. And then that's kind of how you dive into life. And that's not our experience at all. We were invited so many places by people all the time because the reality is so many people are transplants down here. Yeah, honestly, you know, I, and after meeting so many of you on Zoom calls over the last two years, this question gets asked all the time. And it's one of my favorite things to share because I would say it feels like, and, I, and I'm not giving a statistic here, but like from my experience, eight out of 10 people that we meet, it might even be nine out of 10 people aren't from here. Yeah, they I mean, my core group of like moms that I hang out with, especially with our homeschool, one of them is from here. Yeah, and that that's fascinating. And, and why I say that and why that's important to know is because when you, when you move to an area and people start to welcome you in immediately, um, you know, up, it could be nerve wracking. Like, why are people so welcoming? But the thing to recognize is people are either going through the exact same thing you're going through at the same time with you, or they're only a few steps ahead, or they did it 20 years ago and they remember what that transition yeah. is like. And that is the thing that makes our community so unique, I think, because like no matter whether you live near the beach or you live up near Wesley Chapel or you're in Lakewood Ranch, like, all of these areas, everybody moves into it, right? Most people aren't from there and it is just an extremely welcoming and it's been a huge blessing that we did not expect. Now it's easy to sit here and wax poetic about the things that we really love about living here, but you know, the thing that often uh, people ask me about is when I share the things that I don't necessarily love. You know, I've got a cockroach story that everybody loves to tell me that they had, you know, it was just great for them. Um, I'm, I'll tell you the real story. It's so sad that I was, I'm now known for the, a cockroach story. But, but when we first moved here, I'll give you an example, right? So like Florida has creatures and pests and wildlife and all kinds of things that if you're not from Florida, they're different. And um, some of them would be considered bad. You know, uh, others are just nuisance. And then it's just like anything else. When you live somewhere long enough, you start to recognize those things weren't nearly as big of a deal as you thought they were. But it is real. You gotta you gotta deal with some things. You gotta um, you know work through some challenges sometimes because of you know the wildlife and things that are around us. Um, you know we have to take special precautions with our home because we there are termites in Florida, yeah. um, so that's a little bit unique. I don't love that. The mosquitoes where we live really aren't bad at all. People often say you know you live in Florida, mosquitoes didn't carry a pit. But where we live, it's not a problem. Right. It is in some places, though. That's not, you know, the le the really big place or the really big bug is the noceums. Those ones will get you. Yeah, and they're called noceums. Like literally, no that's because <laughs> you don't see them, but you feel them because they bite so hard. Um, and they tend to hang out in, in moist, um, shaded areas. So like um, parks near water. Mm. That so are, Florida's a swamp. So yeah, yeah exactly, anywhere. Exactly. Parks near water tend tend to be those spots, but you stay in the in the sun, it's not usually a problem. But those suckers can get to you. Now, we we've shared this before. I have seen gators in water retention ponds in new construction neighborhoods. We have seen gators in um, all of the the wildlife preserve areas where we expect to see them. We personally have never seen an alligator trouncing down our street, nor have we heard one of our neighbors say that they're there. However, if you buy a home on a golf course with all kinds of open bodies of water on it, you could probably expect to see a gator walking across the golf course or maybe even your parking lot. That's just the reality of yeah. it. But the thing to take note of is like, if you leave those things alone, they leave you alone, period, right? They're minding their own business. 
Those guys have been around a lot longer than we have, and we're just gonna leave them in their space. And we, you know, we made the decision that like, we don't swim in um, natural water here. Like we're not going in a fresh body of water. And especially if you can't see the bottom, <laughs> right? right? We're just gonna let that go. So like, that's something we don't necessarily love. The other thing, the heat in the summer, um, while we're we're okay with it, we made an exchange. We would rather sweat, I would rather sweat yeah. twice through my clothes in one day than um, have to bundle up, freeze, and have car parts break because it's so cold outside. That's the exchange I made. Yeah. It's not for everybody, right? We've heard the, the term oppressive used <laughs> with the summer temperatures. And to be real, like July, August, September, that is kind of when it like it's on and by by the end of september you're over it you're like this is enough yeah i made the poor decision to train for a half marathon over the summer and i was running in the middle of the day because that's when i could get it in and we had a heat index of 108 on a regular consistent basis and this was probably the hottest summer we ever had and talking to people who've lived here longer than us they said the same thing so the the heat is real but also it's not negative 30. Right. And it is humid. Listen, y'all, It that I laugh because I wear glasses and we have the AC effect here. So your your glasses are inside, you know, they're nice and cool. And when you walk out into warm, muggy air, what happens is your glasses just churn. Like, like they look like the inside of your um, mirror after you took a shower, right? Like yeah. it's part of the, like, you just deal with it. You learn how to tolerate it. And you will literally break a sweat walking from your car into Costco. Oh, you right? don't even have to go that far. <laughs> you do not even need to walk all the way to Costco. You will break a sweat just closing the door. Yeah, that's a fact. And, and you know, you just, you take a shower and if you're not cool down, let's say you went to the gym in the morning or something, you came home and you shower, you go back. It's like, it never even happened. And y'all, I'm just being real. Cause like, it is not, it's not pretty. I remember we were here the first summer and uh, I was meeting with a friend um, that we, we had made acquaintances here and he became a friend and we were sitting at the table. I was like, I'm like, Hey man, I'm sorry if I, if I stink, I've been running around all day. He goes, dude, he goes, the, everybody is in the same situation as you are. And I was like, okay, that's fair. You know what I mean? It's one of those moments. Cause like, I didn't know how to handle myself and, and it's true, you know, in, in the summer it is hot and sticky. That is just the reality of it. And then right around November, the first week in November, right after Halloween, yep, right after Halloween, it's like, it's like the Lord walks over, flips a switch and turns the oven off. Cause that's what it feels like you're in. Um, a bag of clams I've heard of, right? <laughs> that's, that's legitimate. You're like, yeah, steal like a steam clam. I could get that right. Like, but it's like he, he flips a switch and all of a sudden the humidity stops right and it's you know 75 degrees and it's everything everybody imagines florida is in the in the winter time and it just absolutely it's like that warm hug you get the the sun on your skin in the morning and it's just oh this is why we do this it's so incredible and it stays that way till roughly april or may yeah right um we went to puerto rico last may and it wasn't hot here yet. It was hot in Puerto Rico. We got an education about that, by the way. Um, cheap plane, plane tickets, though. She, This woman got a steal over there. Not to go tangent, but um, if you're in Florida, Tampa flies um, Spirit direct to Puerto Rico. And she got tickets for, like, how much? I don't know. I think the whole trip might have cost us $1,000 for five days. <laughs> it was amazing. And we eat a lot. Oh, so good. It was so good. Sorry for the tangent there, but like... Yeah, but you, you should go. Yeah, you should Honestly. go. Yeah, and and we have uh, great airports since we're talking about that. Uh, Tampa International flies international. Um, of course, they fly um, Mexico and uh, Guatemala and all those those uh, so South American uh, countries. Um, you can get direct out to the West Coast as well. Of course, you can go to Atlanta, all the other hot spots. But the airport has been recognized as one of the best ports, uh, airports in America for two straight years running. It's incredible. Like, it's such a nice airport to fly in and out of. We, what, 50 minutes ahead of time? And and still have time to get Starbucks? And we still parked, yeah. right? So we weren't getting dropped off. But anyways, they wanted to know what we don't like <laughs> right now. Sorry. So you're, We're talking you're about still that. going to what we do like. Traffic. I don't, super easy. I don't so like the traffic. traffic. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we don't like the traffic. Um... We don't rank it. Tampa is uh, 30th in, in the nation for the 50 largest metropolitan areas for congestion. So we're not in the we're not even in the top 20 y'all We're 30th. However, there are certain spots where we know we're going to get pinned up every yeah. single time. Now I've made it. I've taken this lady to the airport in 28 minutes from our house, which is almost on the beach. Um, 
during the day, the daytime, that's 45, usually 50 yeah. minutes, right? Um, but we've made it as little as 28. Now, going to downtown Tampa, there's a, a congestion point um, because the infrastructure really wasn't built to have 3.3 million people or whatever we're at right now. But there's a congestion point right downtown where 275 and I-4 meet. And that point it's there- It's purgatory. You're, you're gonna, and here's the thing, it does flow well. Yeah. It does flow well, but it's slow. So you're not gonna be doing any, any racing through downtown um, on the highway there because it's just not feasible. Um, at any, if you're at the right peak time, it's gonna always be slow. And um, you know, it can take an hour to get across the city sometimes, you know, from the north side to the south side. So just keep that in perspective. Traffic's not the best. The drivers here since we're that's where about it. people say Florida drivers, but the reality is it's just people driving in Florida because we talked earlier. So many people are not from here. So everyone's taking their driving abilities from all over the country and you have to drive differently in Southeast Michigan than you do in LA or in New York. And all of those people are coming here driving. And so when you see somebody in the far left lane fly over to turn right three lanes, you know, maybe that's normal to them. So just keep your eyes up and use your blinker. Yeah. So the pests we talked about, traffic we talked about, um, the, uh, the cost of living here is it's not easy. Um, and we, it's changed a lot y'all. So when we moved down here in 2018, five years ago, um, Tampa was a steal. Real estate was a, an absolute bargain. I used to, when we started doing the, the homework on her, I'm like, how is this so inexpensive? Cause it costs less, less to live in Tampa than it does the, the median family in the United States. Now we're still just barely above that, but that's not really where it is. Housing is one thing. Um, you know, if you're local they're they're not used to what has happened here. Um, if, but we're from elsewhere and we see, you know, we've got clients that come from all over the place, right? The Pacific Northwest, Los Angeles, San Diego, like people sell houses for $1.3 million and you know, they have only have half their mortgage left. They'll take 500 grand and buy a house cash here. And they're like, this is the cheapest thing ever. Meanwhile, the locals taxes are going through the roof because now their property values are going up. So there's this give and take, but where we really kind of saw that was like in our food and dining. Those are areas where we really noticed immediately we were hit with like 15%. And this is pre pandemic and all the nonsense, like food cost us about 15% more, maybe even 20. Yeah. Which is surprising. I was super naive and ignorant to that. I was thinking that, especially with produce and things of that nature, like it would be less expensive because there's two growing seasons down here, as opposed to up North where you have four seasons, you only have really one true harvest to harvest all those. So I thought, you know, produce would be less expensive. It'll be easy, more easily accessible. And that's really not the truth from our experience where we're at. It might be somewhere else in the state, um, but from my experience, groceries are more. The biggest sticker shock we got though is car insurance. Yep. Um, that one hurt and that was the reality. And we came from Michigan where car insurance is not cheap at all it's a no fault state and you know car insurance up there is super high and we were in wayne county where it was a higher insurance rate than more of the counties in that state yeah. and when we came down here um it was a sticker shock to say the least i might have cried a few tears <laughs> or 10 but you know it, it literally doubled it but worked. then we also we didn't have the income tax or the state income tax so like it just became a wash at that point yeah so let, let's talk about that specifically because there's some key points here right like when i say the cost of living is is high i recognize first thing i want you guys to know is it's high everywhere and where you might be looking at us and laugh because it's a steal compared to where you live right like we get clients that are paying literally as much as, as uh, 13 to 15 percent income uh, their personal income tax to the state um, we get uh, people that have property taxes that are three times as high as um, they are here so like trust me we hear you right one of the big advantages is we don't have a state income tax now if you if you don't have a a, a, a large wage like if you're not um, a high six-figure earner or a seven-figure earner then that doesn't affect you as much so like it's not a benefit to and we understand that right um, so I wanted to share that, but like Kate's being honest about the, the auto insurance, our auto insurance was $2,500 a year for one new vehicle that we leased. And, um, we had an expedition. So like just sharing perspective and we owned a 2013, we still do a 2013 Volkswagen Passat that is paid for. And, um, we were paying 2,300, um, back home. 
We kept our insurance here for the first three years we were here because we knew how much insurance was. And then it got way worse. Um, and then we, um, our insurance company called us and like, we know you live in Florida. We're canceling your insurance. <laughs> so we had to, we had to. And listen, I wasn't trying to do anything. I didn't say that I didn't, right? Like, so, but we, we, you know, we tried to hold on to as long as we could and literally our insurance doubled. Double. And, it's and twenty five hundred dollars every six, six months. months. So we pay five grand a year for auto insurance, which is you know again it's a double. Um, but we own our own business, and between that and our property taxes, the same home that we have here um, in Tampa, the same size home and the same quality community, our taxes would be somewhere between eleven and thirteen thousand dollars. Our our homeowners taxes, um, and they're gonna be right around seven grand for us. Yeah. Um, now our homes valued right around seven hundred thousand dollars just for perspective i'm not trying to flex y'all i'm just trying to share mm -hmm. okay we didn't pay that for it i just want everybody to know um but i think it's without sharing the reality of, of what it is i think that that's unfair and lastly i'll say this on, on the uh, cost of living i did a huge breakdown video if you if you watch this channel where i went line by line and told you guys like how much you actually have to make um there was an article um inside of redfin um, that said that you'd have, to, if you wanted to buy, move to Tampa and buy a home, you would have to essentially make about 115 grand. As a matter of fact, they, that's the United States average, right? If the 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 sales price on a home is 400 grand, you essentially need to make 115 thousand dollars a year to be able to go buy a home and and to be, be able to afford to live. And um, I shared that we think you know to live comfortably because people ask all the time. If you're single, it's one thing, right? If you if you're a new couple with no kids, obviously you have a lot less um, um, outgo. You know, kids are very expensive. We have three kids. Um, the grocery bills disgusting. Our grocery bills nuts. We've shared that. Like she she is really good. I, I mean, I looked at the 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 bill from uh, QuickBooks, and it, you know, we spend fifteen hundred dollars a month on on groceries. That's essentially what it is for a family of five, y'all. Like, you know, we we are growing kids, so like. I, um, I hope you can hear our heart in this. Like our, our goal here is just to be as transparent as we can. I don't know how you would make it as a family making $75,000 and trying to come down here and buy a house. Could you do it? Yes. Would it be tight? Would it be a struggle? Yes. You would not be saving bukus of money. You wouldn't be going on vacation. You wouldn't be happy. Like you would have to buckle down. Yeah. Right. And it's just what what is it worth to you if if the lifestyle outweighs the sacrifice then it's worth it yeah but, but it's, it's it, the reality but it's fair to say like we you know I, you need to make six figures or more if you have a family to to really i mean guys you don't want to be living paycheck to paycheck you want to be able to put money away you want to be able to do, do nice things for your family like um you want to be a, a good steward of your finances like it, it's just what it costs and you know it's part with the interest rates right now the average the the median home here in the greater Tampa Bay area is right around 430,000 the average that we see purchased is between 450 and 550 pretty normal um you can spend tens of millions of dollars on property here right you literally can but you can still find condos and townhomes yeah. 180 grand so like there is a there is a balance that you can find here in the area um and you can you can if if you want this to happen you can make it happen and if that interests you and you want to reach out to us please don't hesitate all of my contact information is listed down below heck there's even a link to my calendar where you can schedule a time that's most convenient for you um i know we got a little bit long-winded here but um i really appreciate you taking the time to share um y'all if you have questions put them down in the comment i'll make sure i get them in front of the boss lady here um, you know, she, she, she has a heart of gold and she really wanted to share this with you. I'm grateful to be able to share her with you. Um, and until next time, y'all go out and live that Tampa life.